As you can see, I'm locked down in a room that's full of books, and I know what most of them are, but a few weeks ago, I discovered a book I didn't realise I had, and there was something really quite exciting about it. I found this book, which is called Introduction to Chemical Philosophy. Found it quite late at night, and then I looked inside, and much to my surprise, I found signature that appeared to be from Ernest Rutherford, the famous physicist. I was amazed. Usually when you find these things, there's some sort of forgery or joke. But I was really excited, photographed it and sent it off to Keith Moore, the hero of Brady's Objectivity Channel, who's an expert on things like this. And he emailed back and said he thought it was genuine. Where did this book come from, Professor? How come you've got it? I have two theories where it might have come from. I certainly didn't buy it myself. And one theory is that I may have inherited it from my friend David Jones, who left me his whole library of books, and I just selected a few in a big hurry. And I probably chose this one because it's by Tilden, who's quite a famous 19th century chemist. But I probably just took it without looking inside. The other possibility is that it was inherited from my wife's family because her grandfather was a student with Rutherford. And I suppose it's possible that Rutherford thought, this is an old book, I don't know what to do with it, I'll give it to one of my students. Professor, from the signature, it appears that he's written his name to say, I own this book. He's not autographing it for a fan or something. I totally agree. This is not a dedication to somebody. This is a thing to show you own it. When I got the book out so we could make this video, I noticed, surprisingly, there is a second signature of Rutherford inside the cover where you can barely read it. Now, this book was published in 1886 when Rutherford was 15. And my theory is that perhaps he bought it second hand when he came as a student to England. He was born in New Zealand because there are a couple of prices written in pencil, which is the signature of a second hand book dealer. And probably he wrote his name on the inside cover and thought nobody will see it there, so he wrote it on the next page as well. Perhaps we should tell people who Ernest Rutherford was. And secondly, is that book worth a lot of money? Ernest Rutherford was the famous physicist who formulated the first plausible structure of the atom and discovered that alpha particles were the nuclei of helium atoms. He won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1908, and 11 of his students also won Nobel Prizes. Shows how little all of us have achieved. I don't think the work is worth very much at all, though Keith Moore, when he saw the signature, and the fact that the book is also written by a fellow of the Royal Society, is keen to have it from the, the Library of the Royal Society when I've got fed up with it. Oh, well, hang on a second. I, I might make you an offer. I'd quite like that one. Maybe we should have a bidding war. Other thing which I think is interesting is that this book contains a really quite old periodic table. This periodic table is therefore by far the oldest periodic table that I possess. And if you look at it, there are all sorts of strange things. It's covered in question marks where there might be new elements. Of course, there are no noble gases because they hadn't been discovered. But beryllium is shown with a G because sometimes in those days people called it glucinium from the Greek word meaning sweet. Beryllium salts are really poisonous, but somehow people tasted it and decided it tasted sweet. And then boron, which I've never seen before, is written as B-O, and rhodium as RO. I suspect they put the periodic table in in a terrific hurry and they made some mistakes. Professor, just while you were talking, I, I, I was doing a bit of Googling 
And I found an autograph letter signed by Rutherford from 1920 selling for two and a half thousand dollars. My feeling is that when it's a letter, that's something really special. When it's just labelling a book, just like he might have labelled his clothes for the laundry, then it probably isn't quite as exciting. But it's a book that's got the periodic table in it, and as we all know, Rutherford's name is on the periodic table. Yes, though it wasn't then, of course. No. But I think... I have no idea whether it's worth much money, and but it's a very nice feeling that I may be reading a book that Rutherford read. Isn't it a great thought as well to think about Rutherford having a book and looking at that periodic table, not knowing that one day his name would be on it? Yes. Of course, that's the you assume that he actually read the book. Right. <laughs> and... Um, and that the periodic table seems to have been just added as an extra chapter at the end. Are you going to give the book to Keith at the Royal Society? Probably, eventually. It could end up on objectivity in a second video, yes. then. <laughs> but the other thing which is quite, I think, is interesting, there are a whole series of questions about the periodic table, and I can't answer most of them. They're so old-fashioned questions, like... To explain the differences between sodium and potassium. And I have no idea what in 1880 somebody would have expected for an answer for that question. Since there are no answers in the book, we'll never know. Take me through the very moment when you first opened it and saw E. Rutherford. I was in, my, in the study just about to go to bed. So it was after 11 o'clock at night. And for some reason, I was just looking at the books and I opened this and I thought, wow. But of course, my first thought was that it was probably a forgery or whatever, though I don't see why anybody should put Rutherford's name in a slightly obscure chemistry textbook. If you're going to forge it, you would forge it somewhere else. I also found in another room here, this book here which has a photo of Rutherford with his signature. I mean, this is a printed signature. What's interesting is by the time he got this signature, he'd become a lord. So he wrote Rutherford without an E, because there's a convention in the UK that people who are lords, they're all men who are lords, sign just their title, Rutherford, because he was Lord Rutherford, without a first name. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I think there's a really good chance you'll enjoy my other YouTube channel, Objectivity. It's all about all sorts of famous science objects and little stories from history. I'll put a link here on the screen and down in the video description. We are joined by Captain Disillusion. And guess what? Today it's happening. Because this is where they store most of the moon rocks and soil that were brought back from the moon by the Apollo astronauts. Joined by Diana Cowan from the Physics Girl YouTube channel. It's the white gloves of destiny. I didn't tell you who was operating the camera because it's not James. James who normally does it, he's back in the UK. It's a very special celebrity camera operator actually. 